Hi, this is Joshua Culp. We are learning Daf Nun Vav, a Masechet Avodah Zarah, page 56, with Daf Shui. I am filming this from Camp Ramah in New England, where I am teaching over the summer. So you might see the Ramah shirt. I'm not in a library, but greetings to you wherever you're listening to this from Camp Ramah in New England. Um, and we're continuing, as we're going to do throughout the rest of this Masechet, to learn about um, Yain Nesech, about the contagion, and I'm using that word intentionally, the, the notion that a non-Jew touches wine and that wine becomes Yain Nesech, becomes forbidden libated wine, and then sort of con, um, uh, contaminates all the other wine, which is something that we're going to talk about today, and uh, turns all of this wine into something that's prohibited. Now, the Gemara talks about a concept called Nitzok, and I want to explain that well because it's an important concept. So Nitzok, Latzuk, is to pour. Nitzok is poured. The concept specifically refers to the, comes from the world of impurity, from Tuma, and it refers to a case where an upper vessel is being poured into a lower vessel, and the lower vessel has impurity in it. So let's say there's a bowl of impure substance below and a liquid is being poured from below, from above. The question is, does the impurity travel upward through the flow and defile, make the liquid in the upper vessel impure? And we can see why this is a debate. Uh, simple gravity dictates that none of the physicality, the stuff that's in the lower vessel gets to be part of the upper vessel. So like if there was, I don't know, germs in there, germs couldn't really literally flow up, at least as far as I understand the way germs work. On the other hand, if we want to think about what constitutes a body of liquid, the body of liquid begins now, it's connected by that flow, at least momentarily, and the body of liquid is one. Uh, such that, you know, if we were to think of uh, a bodies of liquid of all having uniform status of impurity, then why shouldn't the upper vessel become impure? So the rabbis in our Masechet apply this to the concept of Avodah Zarah, of Yain Nesech. Does, if the bottom part is Yain Nesech, uh, does it flow up to become the, um, the top part? Now, this is specifically the question with the boar and the gat. The, um, the gat is the wine press. The garguti, which we're gonna see in this um, page, is a basket separating the upper wine press, which flows into the vat. The vat, the liquid in the vat is susceptible to becoming yain nesech, but we've learned in the Mishnah that its status doesn't flow up to the gat for the um, upper uh, press to become Yai Nesech. And the question is, if we hold that there is such a concept of Nitzok, then why doesn't it flow up? And um, the, the Gemara doesn't really answer this, but the Tosvot answer it with the concept of Nitzok Bar Nitzuk, which I would call second stage flow. Uh, the first flow is from the bottom vat to the basket. And that's debated whether or not the basket, when the, water, when the wine flows up from the vat and goes back into that basket, whether the basket becomes contaminated. If the contents of that basket now come into contact with the contents in the upper um, wine press, all Rishonim hold that the upper wine press remains pure, not susceptible to Yain Nesech. Um, and this is an important concept that just briefly I'll touch on the problems that they had in medieval Europe because they had non-Jewish servants in their home all the time. Now, if a non-Jewish servant was to pour wine for a Jew, the wine that's poured out certainly, according to the Gemara, we'll see this, becomes Yain Nesech and is prohibited to a Jew. So a non-Jewish woman or man or whatever couldn't um, pour wine for a Jew. The question is, is the wine that's still in the vessel that she or he is drinking or pouring from, not even drinking, but pouring from, does that become yain nesech as well, forbidden? Now, imagine what were to happen if this servant pours wine somewhere and then pours the remainder of that 
back into the barrel, you could very, very quickly, all of the wine, and with a few simple errors, all of the valuable wine in a home could become yain nesach. So the rabbis wanted to make sure that such things didn't happen, so they sort of create, the Tosvot really, the medieval rabbis create this concept of nitzok bar nitzok, second stage flow, and only the flow according to the Tosvot only goes up by one stage and doesn't go up by two stages. Um, I just want to conclude um, just a funny, uh, this notion of bar nitzok, I thought was a kind of a cool concept and I tried to get a friend who has a brewery in Jerusalem to call his, um, his brewery bar nitzok. Um, it made the finalist for one of his lists, but for his list, but I don't think that he's going to call it. He thought it was a little too obscure and no one would get the reference. But the brewery is called Hatch, at least until it's been being renamed. It's a great brewery in uh, the Shuk, right near the Fish and Ships place. Um, the head brewer's name, the owner's name is Ephraim. And if you're ever there, tell him that Josh Culp says hello. <laughs>